I would invite Kumar Venkatesh B for his presentation. You can yes, share sir. your screen. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. So let me know once my screen is visible. It is visible. Yeah. So today I am going to demonstrate how does uh, automated ledger scrutiny and voucher scrutiny can be done. So here we have a four step process. First, let's see what is the input we need. So the data input we need is simply the trial balance and the day book from the client. Whether he is using tally, any ERP, SAP, whatever it may be, just take the trial balance and day book and then do a data cleanup, which will take around five to 10 minutes, which I will be showing. Uh, and then step three, we will do some ledger classification and then we go to step four and uh, we will run the automation. So I will just uh, jump into the live demonstration and I will show how it will be working. So I'm sharing an Excel. Uh, I think it is visible now. Is the Excel visible? Yes. Yes, it is visible. This Excel is a trial balance taken from a client, which is almost having 4,547 ledgers. Just imagine how much time it will take for you to scrutinize each ledger by ledger, say day, one day or two day or three days. But now in a blink of a, your eye, we can scrutinize the entire ledgers. So anywhere in the world, the format of trial balance is common. It will have the first column as a ledger name, and then it will continue with opening debit, opening credit, current year debit, current year credit, closing debit, closing credit. So this skeleton is famous across the world, whether you are using SAP, Tally, Joho, any, you name it, anything, the trial balance will be of the similar kind only. So I just, I took that and then I did some data cleanup and then I just has added two rows here. One is the first row, sorry, the first column is component and the second column is group. So if I apply filter here, you can see I have grouped the entire ledgers into balance sheet ledgers and PNL ledgers. In trial balance, firstly, all the ledgers will be relating to balance sheet. At the end, PNL ledgers will come. So this will hardly take one to two minutes. And when it comes to second column, I have bifurcated the data into assets, expense, liabilities, and revenue. This will take another five minutes. Then uh, ledger name, opening debit, opening credit, current debit, current credit, closing debit, closing credit. These are all populated from the trial balance. At the end, we have two more columns, which is TDS sections and the subgrouping. This will take 15 uh, fifteen minutes if we do it. So or else one uh, who is not having that much of time, they can skip this and still run the uh, automation. So if we see in TDS, all the sessions uh, are, sections are covered and in subgroup also discovered. Now you can see in my Excel only the sheet input TB is there. No other sheet is there. Now just uh, run the code. So for running the VBA code, I have developed uh, this VBA code using uh, chart GPT and various other tools by doing prompting, which I will be showing at the end of the demonstration. So once the we get the code from the AI, we have to press Alt F11, then this, uh, VBA screen will appear here. We have to go click insert and in insert, we have to click on module. Then a module will appear. Then we have to paste your code here. I have already pasted my code, which I'll just scroll down. So my code is having 30 scenarios for ledger scrutiny and uh, the logic for 30 uh, rules are here, which I have given in the prompt and it has converted into VBA code. So this is the code. So just uh, control S and then close the visual basic window. Now we are back to Excel. Just press Alt F8. You will have one uh, macro available here, ledger scrutiny master macro. So in this trial balance, there are 4,500 ledgers. Just let's see the magic now. Within just few seconds, it will scrutinize and it will give us a detailed report sheet wise. See, it has uh, given a pop-up that ledger scrutiny is successful for all the 4,500 ledgers. And it all, the beauty is like, it also generates a summary sheet, which I have developed in my prompt asking uh, it to populate the summary sheets. Here it gives a high level review, like what are all the 
criteria that are run on those 4000 ledgers almost 30 rules have been run on each ledger and it is saying the first rule liability ledger with debit balance generally any liability ledger will end with a credit balance but it is highlighting it is flagging that 436 ledgers are ending with debit balances so when we scroll down to the rules uh, 383 ledgers are there with no payment if you want to know what are these ledgers that are then you just go to that sheet here you can see rule 1 and uh, the auditor's question will also appear here in red font it is saying why these liability ledgers end with debit balance are these advances or expenditures to be recognized so each ledger full uh, full details of the ledgers are populated in each sheet if i move to sheet number 2 these are the ledgers without any payment you can see here in credit column there are transactions done with those parties but no single rupee is paid to them so we can raise a question to the client and the client can fill his uh, uh, comments in the m column here it is audit comments where the client will fill and here the auditor remarks can be filled and you can capture this as your working paper as well and rule 3 uh, ledgers with no transactions you can see the entire current debit uh, current year debit and credit is zero means why these ledgers if they are not still having transactions why they these are there in the books of account so in this way it will populate a uh, separate sheet for each anomaly that is identified so here you see inter units are there inter units are supposed to close by year end and they should not reflect any kind of closing balance and similarly tds provisions also i have included here so on these three ledgers uh, tds has to be deducted because it's a salary and managerial remuneration under section 192 and uh, dividend the company has not declared anything so that is not there tds receivables on interest income so each tds provision is captured into separate sheet and all the ledgers that how the liability for that tds section are placed here so now i will take you through voucher scrutiny as well so similarly once in your uh, trial balance once this classification is done the tds classification the subgroup classification and at the beginning balance sheet or pnl liability assets revenue you need not do it again for your day book you just have to use your v lookup and carry forward this classification to there so here so now you the excel which you are uh, watching it it is in day book populated from the client software here everything uh, from column b till column f and g is populated from the client data so the first column which is the day column i just used the formula of text and i have extracted the day so that to capture the sunday entries and now at the end as i said tds and subgroup you need not rework again you just have to do the vlookup if if you can see the formula of vlookup in my formula tab you can notice that this grouping is uh, coming from the trial balance so let's see how many vouchers are there in this excel file almost there are 29466 vouchers right uh, it takes lot of time if we have to do it manually and now let's run the uh, voucher scrutiny code on this so again if i press f11 here it's a different code again which i developed using ai by giving various prompts and there are almost 24 criterias that will be checked on each voucher entry and a separate sheet will be populated I'll just reopen the sheet Sir, two minutes are left. Yeah. So you can see, as of now, only input day book is there. I'm just running uh, voucher scrutiny. so some uh, few people might have doubt that in when we take day book from the tally narrations will come under each entry but in tally if we download a tdl there will be a option called column day book in that narrations will come in separate column so that always take column day book and then uh, if we run this voucher scrutiny it will be easy so on 30000 almost 30000 voucher entries it is running various parameters and it is identifying all the high risk vouchers and also various tds provision and uh, narrations with fraudulent wordings 
suppose some person has used in narration like uh, reversal write off personal upon director's approval those are also will be captured so if we can see again, a summary sheet is beautifully generated here in rule one. It is saying 765 entries are passed on Sunday, whereas uh, in ben, uh, some forensic parameters are also included here. Benford law is covered and cash payments above 10,000 is identified for that. The criteria is single day, same party has to be there. That, uh, that is also covered here. I will take you to that sheet. And here you can see it has a filtered uh, alphabetical wise and for each alphabetical it made a total. And here since the days are different, it has not highlighted red color. But if we scroll down, there are red color highlights where we have to check whether uh, on the same day 10,000 has exited or not. So it has uh, arranged it everything. You just have to do the check one. And there are all, so many rules. These are all, rule eight is very important. It uh, identifies all the journal entries which are high risk because few <laughs> ledgers journals like investment ledgers borrowings or those kind of things so in this way it has generated almost uh it has carried forward 24 oh, parameters in scrutiny and 30 parameters in uh Maji, uh, your time is over like huge data being processed just within uh seconds so the output is uh, just in a blink of your eye you just have to pull out your trial balance just do some data cleanup and uh that's uh, the end of the live demonstration and I'm open for any questions. Yeah. <clears throat> what are the parameters that you used while providing the uh, prompt? Yes, sir. That, uh, that thing I will show how I have uh, included in the prompt. Uh, I am unable to share the screen. Uh, here something happened. This has come, sir. Can I put the prompt in the uh, chat board since I am able to uh, share the screen? Is it a very huge prompt? No, no, uh, yes, a bit, but uh, yeah, you can put in the chat board now. Now, the share option is there. Yeah, I'm just sharing the screen. Uh, I think my screen is visible. Yes. Yeah. So I told it clearly I have an Excel file and uh, in trial balance, I have nine, nine columns and the headings of those nine columns. I have told it clearly. And then, uh, I also narrated some story for it. So rule one, I have defined, uh, since I know it in a if formula way, I told it, even you, you can tell the rule in a simple logic. Like uh, okay. liability ledgers, closing uh, balance, if it is debit, you identify and put it in a separate sheet. In that simple English language also, we can tell the prompt. Okay. So in this way, I have given a uh, prompt where initially eight rules with eight rules I tried. And once it started working, and then I have done so much of permutation and combinations to avoid errors and all. And uh, then finally, every day I put the code and uh, enhance it because uh, it has to identify fraudulent words in narrations also. So each day the code will be improvised. In, uh, so to keep it offline, I haven't integrated with AI, but uh, daily okay. uh, we are updating the code, be it for ledger scrutiny or... Okay. Uh, the voucher scrutiny. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kumarji. That was a wonderful presentation. We can now...